This is A Course of Love, reading 93. We are in the chapter called The Intersection. Before we begin, take a deep breath in. Bring in all your thought, feelings, thoughts, sensations. Bring them in. Be aware of them all. And then exhale and release them. Release, release, release. Go into the void. As we read this, allow yourself to be in the void. Continually breathing, bringing in everything as it comes in, and releasing to avoid so that you make space for new perspectives. The meaningless category might include such things as the happenings of your daily routine, chance encounters, illnesses, or accidents, while in the beyond meaning category exist the relationships that broke your heart, grief, poverty, war, the events that seem to alter your destiny, the search for God. By using the word sit, I mean to imply that these things have not passed through you and in the act of passing through, formed a relationship and a partnership with you. While passing through would seem to imply an entry and exit point, the relationship developed through the passing through continues. Just as wind or water passing through an entry and exit point has an impact and emotion, so does what passes through you provide the movement of your journey. What passes through you is transformed by the relationship with you just as surely as you are transformed by the relationship with it. When you remove yourself from the self-held position of meaning giver, you let things be what they are and allowed to be what they are. Their meaning is naturally revealed. What this takes is a passing through approach and a relinquishment of the idea of bringing things to a stop where they can be examined under a microscope quite apart from their relationship to you or to anything else. Imagine yourself brought to such a halt and examined apart from everything else within your world. Anyone wanting to learn anything about you would be wiser to observe you as you are within your world. Would you still be the same person in a laboratory? Are you still who you are when another takes you into his or her mind and assigns meaning to you? You have made of yourself a laboratory where you bring everything for examination, categorization, testing, and filing away. This is the scenario that separates you from everything else within your world. Everything has meaning only according to what it means to you and not as what it is. Obviously, two kinds of meaning are being talked about. The first we talked of earlier as the finding of truth. The second is what we are talking of here, the finding of a definition, a personal meaning. Can you see the difference? The personal and individual is the I we are dispelling. Think a moment of how you tell a story or report on events that have taken place within your life. Your, you personalize. You are likely to report on what a certain set of circumstances meant to you. And this kind of thinking is thinking with the small I. I saw, I felt, I thought, I did. The individual, personal, separate self is at the center of all such stories. One quite literally cannot conceive of the story without the I. Yet, this you must learn to do, and this task is given you as an exercise. Begin to imagine life passing through you rather than getting stopped for examination at its intersection with you. Begin to imagine seeing the world without the emphasis on your personal self. Begin to form sentences and eventually to tell stories without the use of the I pronoun. This will seem at first as if it is depersonalizing the world and making it less intimate. It will seem as if you are shirking some primal responsibility to assign meaning to everything. Rather than resisting this, strive to cease giving meaning. Start quite simply. Go from the broad to the specific. For example, when you walk out your door in the morning and you might generally think, what a lovely day. What this sentence says is that you have immediately taken in your surroundings and judged them. It is a lovely day to you. 
The day has all or most of the requirements you find pleasing in a day. Replace such a thought with, the grass is green, the birds are singing, the sun is warm. Simply reporting. When you are asked questions such as, how was your day? Respond as much as possible without using the word I or my. Quite referring to people and things in terms of ownership, saying my boss, my husband, my car. Quit referring to people and things in terms of ownership. The removal of the personal I is but a first step to returning you to the consciousness of unity, a first step in going beyond meaning as definition to meaning as truth. As odd and impersonal as it will seem at first, I assure you the feeling of impersonality will be replaced quickly with an intimacy with your surroundings that you never felt before. This intimacy itself will allow you to see yourself as an integral part of all that exists within your world rather than as the small and insignificant personal self you generally accept as yourself. By eliminating the personal, the universal becomes available. As the universal becomes available, you will have no desire for the personal. Even so, you will find that you, what you consider your individuality or uniqueness is very much intact but that it is different than you have always imagined it to be. You will find that you fulfill a grand purpose and have a wonderful part to play in a grand design. You will not feel cheated by losing your separate self. You will feel free. And that was the end of reading 93. And I want to share the insights that this has brought, it is really talking about language and how we use language. Uh, something that I've been pretty conscious about for a while. And, and that's why in this book, The Dragon Adventure for Children, I worked very hard to find neutral language, language that would be in line with much more in line with what he's speaking about in A Course of Love, that we um, less attribute meaning to things through our judgments and our categorizing and separating and our small mind and more observe and take a, and, and learn meanings uh, by that observing. And, and it's a different type of meaning than judgment. It's um, a different experience that can only be accomplished through practicing and trying, just trying. That's our experimenting and our experience that makes reality as in this first book, Being talks about how our experience is reality. Thank you so much for joining me in this journey of remembering who we are and remembering truth, love, joy. Blessings to you today. Enjoy today.